One of these questions is actually quite long. Explain the significance of complementary base pairing for replication, transcription, and translation. So we're talking about a couple of different processes. We're talking about DNA replication, as well as things to do with RNA as well. So that's transcription as well as translation. And we also have to talk about the fact that complementary base pairing and what factors it has to play. So let's first talk about the very start. At the start of a question, you always what you always do is you talk about defining, okay? And defining, we need to do that to um, complementary base pairing. So complementary base pairing, we have to define that. So which um, which bases are complementary to each other? So because we're talking about both DNA and RNA, then we have to then we've got a few extra things to do. So let's talk about DNA first. So in DNA. Adenine binds to thymine, whereas in cytosine binds to guanine, ATCG. How about RNA? So RNA is a little bit different again. So cytosine still binds to guanine. But adenine binds to uracil. So it's slightly different there. Okay, so that's our first thing. Now we have to talk about um, replication. So what's the definition of DNA replication? So we can give a rough definition here. So DNA replication, production of two identical strands of DNA from template. So we make two identical strands of DNA from the one parent strand of DNA. And if you look through your syllabus, they give you um, a point about semi-conservative repli replication. And I've talked a bit about that before, but what that essentially means is that we have two strands of DNA in our double strand DNA. As you break them apart and you turn the two strands of DNA, so you turn one strand of DNA, one double-stranded DNA, you break that apart to become the template strands are like that, and then you add on new nucleotides to form the daughter DNAs. So this one strand of, these two strands of DNA actually become four. Okay? So what this means is that semi-conservative replication means that you have, for this daughter DNA, you have one strand which is originally from the parent. and the other strand is brand new. That's all that semi-conservative replication means. And if you write that down, you get an extra mark. So semi-conservative replication. Good. Okay, so we've talked a bit about DNA replication. Now let's talk about transcription. What do you talk about transcription, transcription first? You talk about the definition. Transcription, production of mRNA from DNA. Okay, and how about this mRNA? The mRNA is actually complementary to dRNA. So mRNA is complementary. Complementary in what? In base sequence. In base sequence to DNA. Good got a few points there. Now let's lastly talk about translation. So there's quite a few points that we can make about translation. So what is translation again? Once again, starting with a definition. So translation 
is production of polypeptide. So we're talking protein here. Production of a polypeptide from from what? From an mRNA sequence. And what helps us to achieve that? Well, it's the tRNA here. So let's talk a bit about the tRNA. So tRNA, what's that made out of? It's made out of um, amino acids. But the tRNA um, contains So if we just go back to there, so the tRNA contains codons, or anticodons rather, because anticodon has the letter T in it. The tRNA contains anticodons, and the anticodon is complementary. is complementary to the mRNA codons. So remember that we're talking about complementary kind of things, complementary base pairing before. So uh, yeah, we've had the board arrays itself for some unknown reason. So the final thing that we can talk about is the fact that complementary base pairing actually preserves the genetic information even though the amino acids even though DNA is going to RNA is going to polypeptide so complementary base pairing conserves information from DNA to RNA to polypeptide. Good. And if I had the remaining um, points, I would actually go through them again. But um, if you counted them all up, if you reverse the video and count them all back up, we have about 9 to 10 points. And given that this is a long question, we're looking for about 8 to 9 points to get maximum. So I would most likely do well in this one. So our next question. Short question, we have to compare the structure and composition of DNA with RNA. So this is a short question, so you might only need to get about 4 marks. So every time that there's an action word of compare, you want to compare the similarities as well as differences. So let's start that with it now. DNA on one side, RNA on the other side. A trusty old table. So let's think of our similarities. Similarities, well they both have four bases, don't they? You have, in this one, you've got uh, A, T, C, and G. And over in RNA, you've got A, U, C, and G, okay? So what are some simil um, some similarities? So four bases, four bases. They're also polymers. They're also chains, chains of nucleotides. Polymers of nucleotides. Polymers of nucleotides. So that's about where the similarities end. Now let's talk about differences. Differences you should know back to front, side to side, left to right. So first of all, DNA, DNA and RNA. The D stands for deoxyribose. So deoxyribose is the sugar, whereas ribose is the sugar. DNA is also double-stranded, D for double-stranded, so it's double-stranded, whereas RNA is single-stranded. 
The final point is what we mentioned uh, a bit before about the four bases. See how these are similar here? Well, in fact, they also have differences within the different bases. So DNA uses thymine as nitrogenous base. But RNA is different, it has uracil. Uracil as nitrogenous base. Good. And that's it. There are plenty more YouTube videos for you to check out, just click on the links below. If you'd like to download the questions, as well as the answers, make sure to like us on Facebook first. And finally, if you'd like to find out how I got a 7 in high-level IB biology, make sure to check out our website in the bottom right-hand corner. Thanks.